Renaissance in French means rebirth. We come across the word Renaissance mostly in the context of the developments in science, arts and literature in the European societies after the Middle Ages. However, many of us don't know that similar phases of developments also occurred in the history of India. So welcome to another episode of the Breakthrough Science Society and today the topic of our discussion is Indian Renaissance. We have with us eminent scientist Dr. Shomitra Banerjee who is the General Secretary of the Breakthrough Science Society. He is a renowned physicist and a full-time professor at the Physical Sciences Department at ISR Kolkata. So without further ado, let's begin. So Professor Banerjee, what do you mean by the Indian Renaissance and how do you evaluate it? Well, before the Renaissance in Europe, there was a time that is called the Dark Ages. And the character of the Dark Age was that the idea was propagated that belief and don't question whatever has been believed, the religious ideas only believe those and don't question it. And it was a dark age because there was no cultivation of science for a long time. And similar phase was there in India. The dark age in India was tentatively from about 12th century to about 19th century. That period. In the 19th century, when uh, the British came to power in India, most of the India was under the British rule, through them, even though they did not want to enlighten the Indian populace, through them, through the media of English language, the ideas of European Renaissance reached India. And a few people who were enlightened for that time, they got that idea and they started applying that in the Indian context. And the foremost among them in the initial phase was Raja Ramana Roy. He initiated a religious reformation uh, by creating what is known as the Brahma Dharma. But at the same time, he enacted the rule, forced the British to enact the rule to ban the, the horrific practice of Sadhguru. In the next phase, we see the join of Indian Renaissance with the Shantra. He, he was a, the principal of the Sanskrit college. He initiated a series of reforms in the education system. Instead of the archaic knowledge that was taught at that time, the things that have been learned, taught and propagated for millennia, instead of those, he wanted to teach the students mathematics, the new kind of logic, the European logic, the logic that was propounded by Locke, Hume, Mill, and, and philosophers like that. He wanted to, the students to learn about the sciences of the time. And by that, he wanted, he has actually written that, he wanted to bring up a band of people who will be free from the old prejudices, who will be imbibed in the new knowledge of mankind, earned after the European Renaissance. And through that, by being imbibed by that, they would take that knowledge, that idea, that way of outlook to the rest of the Indian populace. And he started creating new schools, schools for women, colleges, so that the band of people he, he nurtured they would be teaching in those schools, colleges, and bring up the next generation. This effort bore fruit very fast. If you notice, uh, a large number of people, suddenly you will notice that a large number of very eminent people being born in just one decade, 1860s. Rabindranath Tagore, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, Motilal Nehru, uh, Jagadish Chandra Bose, Prabhupada Chandra Ray. So you will find a large number of people, eminent, who were born at that time. Why? Is it that at a particular time, a large number of eminent people were born? No. They became eminent because they were educated in the new way of education. 
They were schooled in a new way of schooling. And that is the creation of Vidya Sarva. So that, through that, we see the onset of what is known as the Indian Renaissance. And any Renaissance has to oppose the earlier ideas. Science has to oppose, science has to create itself, science has to establish itself in public psychology by negating the unscientific notions, the religious bigotry. So that was the struggle of that time. And Vidyasagar was at the forefront of that struggle, but there are other people also. And through that we see in the next generation itself, in science, we see the advent of great scientists like Jagdish Chandra Bose, Prokhuri Chandra Ray. So, while Vidyasagar was alive, they started doing their greatest sciences. And in the next generation, taught by these people, we see Mingna Saha, Swatanandra Bose, and people like that. So, it was a time when science was on an uphill motion. But that can happen only if it goes on by opposing, by negating the current way of thinking. And that is where we need to discuss in the next lecture. So, Professor Manandi, here I would like to ask you that why did the Indian Renaissance lose its momentum of its early years? Well, as I say, the Indian Renaissance was really gaining momentum through the struggle of people like Vidya Sagar, through uh, Ajayya Prabhupada Chandra Ray, Vignana Saha, Chandra Bose, and C.V. Raman. And it was gaining strength year after year. And that happened when the scientists, there are two factors in it. One, the scientists at that time were doing their science as a way of serving the nation, not from their own personal self-interest. So their way of serving the nation was this. While there are other people who were politically trying to free, free the country, they were trying to establish India before the rest of the world scientifically. So once uh, you consider that they are doing that as a selfless service to the nation, then the way of doing science is one thing. The other issue is that all of these people, they were engaged in a struggle with the unscientific notions, superstitions, bigotry that were prevalent in the society. They raised an unwavering struggle against those things. And thus science was advanced. But in the later phase, uh, we find that there was again a religious backlash, I would say. Another religious uh, reformist movement started, which again wanted to establish India, not scientifically, but that was backward looking. That tried to tell that India was a great country in the past, while they were trying to establish India as a great country in the future. But there was a religious reformist movement that tried to depict whatever was great in India in the past. And as this kind of sentiment took roots, nationalism that developed in India became mixed with religious nationalism. Instead of a nationalism based on science, based on technology, it was basically a nationalism based on religious sentiments. As a result, science took a backseat. And in this background, in this context, India became freedom. Due to various other uh, course of events that I am not going into. Post independence, the situation was. A. The nationalistic fervor through which the earlier band of scientists were doing their science, that was no longer there. So why would the new band of scientists do science? Because of their own personal self-interest. So they did science to achieve personal glory. Science became a career. They did whatever it takes to further that game. And with that kind of motive, 
the top rating science science cannot be done so that is one reason for the downfall of science and secondly as i said that at some point of time there was a struggle between science and unscientific thinking raging in the cultural sphere but at some point of time the people who were the scientists no longer was in the forefront of that battle to win the the game in favor of science they were no longer in that battle they were more or less engaged only in the confines of the laboratories only to further their own career as a result the impact of science on people's mind no longer flourish and nature does not favor a vacuum if science does not capture the people's imagination somebody else will and that's what happened so after the independence we find that unscientific thinking religious bigotry casteism communalism that has increased like anything all this has gone against the advancement of science thank you professor banerji for these insights and i believe that our country has a lot of potential to bring out great scientific developments but we have some hurdles to overcome we have some problems to fix but i am optimistic and i conclude this video with this optimistic note so stay safe and stay healthy and see you soon thank you